Hello and welcome my fellow gravity haters. It's time to talk about the core gym exercises elite high jumpers use and I myself use to increase their high jump and their overall athleticism. And once again at the end of the video I'll be giving you a basic guide on how to utilize all the information I give you. So if you've been doing high reps and short breaks in between please stick around to the end and stop doing that shit. High jumpers are strong. They take forces of up to 7 times their own body weight through their takeoff leg. But really look at the angle of a jump takeoff, or even max velocity sprinting. You'll find the deepest angle of these movements is really shallow. This is the angle we want to target and get really filthy fucking strong and powerful in. So no more messing about the exercises. First off is Olympic lift variations. So power cleans, hand cleans, power snatches. These lifts are used by every elite athlete, from Barsham to Usain Bolt to Ryan Krauser, you know, all very different body types. Moving heavyweight fast will help you build power, strength, improve elasticity, and the stretch shortening cycle. And they're all at those shallow angles we see in our sport. The only downside to these movements are they're really damn complicated. But the best way to learn them is to break the movement down, and most importantly, just do it. You can truly never underestimate the power of just actively doing the movement and probably fucking failing at it. But learning a complicated movement will take multiple sessions. And honestly, it took me a good three months to learn it before I started actually loading the bar. So my recommendation is start with just the bar or one of them 10 kilo curl bars. As a warm up for gym sessions or even just between sets, just get to messing around with it and practice these Olympic lifts. You know, break it down, practice the initial pull and the second pull separately. And in the second pull, it should feel like you're jumping and the momentum of the jump lifts the bar onto your shoulders. And of course, watch a tutorial if you need to. But I promise, the more you mess around with it, the more comfortable it'll become. And you will be ripping big weights in no time. And fuck me, is it fun to pull big weights other people are deadlifting. Next up is the 15 million squat variations. I do like squats for strengthening the legs and I do some clean, uh, that's pretty much of it. Half squats, box squats, quarter squats, Bulgarian squats, quarter Bulgarian squats, and while not a squat, trap bar work. Squats are the foundation for lower body strength, but we did emphasize the importance of the sport specific angles earlier. But early in the season where you do general strength, you want to be doing your half squats, trap bar work, box squats, maybe even deep squats if you can do it naturally. As the season nears, you want to be hitting those more limited ranges of motion with a big fucking weight. You really want to overload and push the amount of force you can produce at these optimal angles. Also, the speed and intent of the lift are extremely important. Without getting too complicated, you want to be moving these weights as fast and with as much intent as possible. If you train to move weights slow, you will be slow. Next up is accessories. So, Variations of the squats and the Olympic lifts are the true meat and potatoes of the workout. For these next exercises, you want to progress as well of course, but their main purpose is to work accessory muscles, maintain strength, maintain correct posture, and prevent injury. So firstly is Romanian deadlifts. There's a standard version and the single leg version. Don't do them sumo. This exercise strengthens the posterior chain, keeping the hamstring, back, and ass really strong and healthy. And this exercise is pretty much the equivalent of a quarter squat before the deadlift. So we're cutting the range of motion at the hip to suit our needs a little better. But in saying that, building a strong deadlift in the off season isn't really a bad move. Back extensions. They're really similar to RDLs, but they isolate the posterior chain slightly better. It's fantastic for overall hamstring, glute, and back strength and health. And overall, it's just a god tier accessory that you'll see every elite jumper doing. Calf raises. So... I call this an accessory, but this is probably the exercise you most want to train like your main lifts. There's the single leg and standard uh, variations, and overall it's just an underrated movement. But you can imagine the forces going through your calf when you go for a high jump takeoff. So you really want to keep your ankle healthy. Build strong calves like you would a squat. Low reps, high weight, long breaks, get that shit as strong as possible. Tib raises. They're probably the only exercise here that is genuinely an accessory. So this strengthens the tibialis anterior muscle, which is a game changer for preventing shin splints and improving ankle dexterity. So when I started jumping, um, 
At times, I couldn't actually run because my shin splints were so bloody unbearable. And even as a teenager, I couldn't even do my javelin run up. But I started doing these exercises three times a week. And since then, I've had zero issues. And I suppose it is down to a little bit of luck, but I recommend and they work fucking great. And obviously this isn't every great exercise every high jumper does, but these are exercises that constantly reoccur in my workouts, you'll see other high jumpers doing online, and they're more than enough to build your own workouts. So here are several workouts I've actually done during my season. If my gym work is after track session, it's usually one main lift followed by two to three accessories, and if it's a gym work only day, it's two main lifts, maybe with some plyos, and then again, two to three accessories following again. So, following this thing called the rule of specificity, you want to do the most sport specific movements that take the most effort first, because you want these done in the highest quality possible. So, if we make an example of a dummy gym only day, firstly it'll be the main Olympic lift, which would be power cleans, five sets, four reps. The second main lift will be box squats, five sets, five reps. And then moving on to the accessories, we'll have back extensions, three times eight, calf slash tib raises done together as a superset, three times six of calf raises, and then 12 of tib raises, and then med ball slam for core, three times 12. And like the players video, we are explosive track athletes. Quality over quantity is the game. Between sets, you want three to four minute breaks on your main lifts, and two and a half to three minutes on your accessories, and even less for core movements. As I said, this is what a lot of my workouts look like. And once again, here's a bunch for comparison. And that's basically it. Once again, this is what I've learned through my own training and researching just a whole fucking bunch. Cheers. Hope it helps.